welcome to That Expert Show, where you help run the show. I'm Anna Canzano. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like what you hear during this show, I invite you to like or subscribe to it wherever you're watching or listening to this. Today we are talking about organic food. What does that mean? What does organic actually mean? And why does it cost so much more to buy organic? We have a phenomenal expert with Consumer Reports lined up to talk with us. Consumer Reports is an entity that I have trusted since I was quite young. I'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. Another entity that I trust is Shoe Mill. This is a family business that spans three different generations. They have the best shoes and the best service. Stick around and I will tell you how to get a promo code so that you can get a special expert show discount at shoe mill and at shoemill.com if you would rather uh, buy your products online so organic food look I am a mom I want the best for my kids but I also don't have an unlimited budget you know so if you want to buy strictly organic you know <laughs> possibly that that can really break the bank I mean the journalist side of me really wants to know whether organic is truly better for me and whether it is worth the cost or whether it's just all a big marketing ploy by the organic industry to try and get us to buy their items. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, it was challenging to find just the right expert for this topic because when I started to delve into this topic, you find that there are people on this end of the organic industry that say, oh, you should only ever eat organic it will you know, save you from getting cancer and they have an agenda to push on that end. And then there's the other end of the spectrum where there's a whole industry geared at dispelling um, the notion that organic is any better for you than eating or buying uh, conventional items that are non-organic. So it was tricky to find somebody who was well-researched and down the middle um, and someone that I trusted. And I'm so relieved because I did find that with Consumer Reports. This is um, the woman that we're talking with is a senior policy analyst with Consumer Reports. Her name is Charlotte Valles, and uh, she has been advocating for consumers in the realm of organic policy for more than 10 years. She is a graduate of Santa Clara University and has advanced degrees from Tufts University as well as Harvard University, and she joins us live right now from Harvard, Massachusetts. Charlotte, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. You know, we were talking a little bit about um, this topic before the show began, and you can understand, being in this industry, how difficult um, it is to find true facts about organic food. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of interest, um, from both sides that want to promote their form of agriculture. So there's lots of information and what we do at Consumer Reports is we take a look at that, um, all of the data, all of the information out there, all of the labels that you can find on food and, and we take a very objective look at them and, um, and then just tell you the facts. It's interesting, you know, Consumer Reports is an entity that my parents would consult. We ran a small uh, motel uh, as I was growing up. And so each purchase that we made, whether it was appliances or mattresses, whatever we bought, uh, my mom would always go to the library and check out Consumer Reports and consult the reviews because it was just, it was, it was um, an entity that she trusted. So I thank you so much for being with us today. I want to dive right Great. in and just start with the basic idea. What does organic actually mean? Does it mean that something doesn't have any pesticides in it? So what, what does organic mean, right? Let's start with that. Let's start with, with organic as a label that you see on food and what that means. It, it means that the farmers who grew or raised uh, the crops or the animals that went into the food, as well as the processors, right? Because far, food doesn't just come from the farm directly to the consumer. It has to be processed. Those processors, as well as the farmers, have essentially agreed that if they sell their food as organic, they will adhere to a very strict and wide-ranging set of federal regulations for what they can and cannot do. And they also agree that they will be inspected annually by an independent inspector 
uh, who make sure that on the farm, in the processing plants, that those uh, very strict standards are being adhered to. So then uh, when it comes to the cost then of organic, why does it cost so much more um, to buy either food or other items that are organic? Right. So we just talked about what organic means in terms of the standards that have to be met. And it's important to also think about, well, what, what do those standards require and what do they, um, what do they prohibit? So they are very comprehensive and they cover a lot of different things, including um, no synthetic inputs can be used with some exceptions, which we can talk about those exceptions as well. Um, it means that farmers have to make their farming decisions not just based on what's the lowest cost to them to produce a certain food, but if they cannot use certain inputs like synthetic fertilizers, like most pesticides, um, that could raise some of their costs. And also they have to consider the health of the soil if they are crop farmers. They can't, um, by law, they actually have to uh, promote the health of their soil through their farming practices. They also have to protect water quality from their farming practices. So it covers a lot of different things that could raise costs for for the farmers if they can't they can't just preventatively spray pesticides on their farm, which could lower their production costs. They can't do that. Um, so they might have to have uh, workers go and manually weed in the fields or do other manual, if they're larger scale, other um, mechanical forms of, of weed control. So that's just one example that could increase their costs. And then those costs are passed on to the consumers in terms of, of higher prices for organic. I see. And I want to thank Chris on Facebook for that question. So the next question that um, I heard a, a lot about from uh, people on Facebook and expert show insiders that were interested in this topic, um, the, the natural question then, okay, so if you are willing to pay for the extra cost to buy organic items or organic food, are there actual health benefits? And I think the, the main illness that a lot of people fear is cancer. Does eating organic or living organically, so to speak, actually prevent cancer? Is there any research that supports that? So there was a study published about a month ago in the Journal of the American Medical Association, um, which was a study done in France. They followed about 70,000 people and they followed them for five years and they, they grouped their 70,000 participants into different um, categories in terms of their self-reported organic food consumption. So the group that had the highest organic, the highest percentage of their diet as organic was in one group, and it was compared to the group that said, no, I don't eat organic, so they were in the, the, the non-organic group. And that study did find a reduced risk of developing overall cancer in the group that reported a high consumption of organic versus the no organic group. And um, of course, cancer is a very, it's not just one disease, there's different kinds of, of cancers. So looking at the specific type of cancer, it was all lymphomas, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and postmenopausal breast cancer. Those were the specific types of cancers where this particular study did show a reduced risk um, in the in the people who ate an organic diet. That is fascinating. So that many people over a course of five years, that's a pretty extensive study then. Yes, it was a very extensive study, you know, a very large sample size. And also they controlled for a lot of other potential variables, right? So not, potential reasons why some people might not develop cancer. Um, so this study controlled for that. Um, things like smoking, you know, all the other risk factors for cancer. And even after controlling for all of those other potential reasons, they still found that the people in the organic group had a reduced risk. And was that a dramatically reduced risk or just kind of a, a, a moderate reduced risk? It was enough that it was statistically significant. And um, I believe that it was 68% reduced risk for, um, for the lymphomas wow. and about 37, it was lower for the postmenopausal breast cancer, um, 
But but those three definitely enough to be statistically significant. Interesting. Now um, let's talk a little about the cost then too, because I know that you know buying organic just isn't um, realistic for a lot of families, at least not. Um, going to the extent of buying all foods organic. I mean, I was at the grocery store the other day and I think I saw organic spices. I was shopping for Thanksgiving and I thought, do I really need to buy organic black pepper or organic poultry season? What is, I don't even understand what that means. Um, so right. I think, you know, Stacy had a great question on Facebook. She says, if you can only afford to buy certain foods, certain foods organic, what does it make sense to buy? Yeah, that, that's a great question because, um, and actually we can talk a little bit more about what say it means on spices, what organic actually means um, on these different foods. But um, the cost question is, is a very important one because it's absolutely true that organic costs more. And uh, for a lot of people, it's just not realistic to expect that their entire food basket can be organic. So right, what do you do in that case? Uh, my advice would be to go organic in the foods that you eat a lot of, right? That would make sense to, if you have an apple every day, um, it might make sense to go organic for apples. Or if you can't have all of your purchases be organic, at least um, maybe some of the time, buy organic for the foods that you eat a lot of. Because um, you really want to, if you want to reduce your exposure to pesticides, which data has shown um, that organic really does have lower pesticide residues, then, then it would be important to do it for those foods that you eat a lot of. And um, another thing to consider is that there are ways to find um, less expensive organic options. So you do have store brands often will offer an organic option. The organic seal on a store brand is those farmers and processors still have to meet the same set of standards that other, let's say a brand name product would have to meet. So that's really one of the strengths of the organic label is, is that seal, that USDA organic seal, regardless of which company is using it, they all have to meet the, the same standards by federal law. And it, so, so, so that would be a way to maybe reduce um, to find less expensive options is to buy store brand. And so when we're talking about, you know, I think we've all heard the idea that, okay, if you're going to buy organic, like you were saying, buy the things that you're going to eat. Um, but I've also heard that you buy organic for items that don't have a thick um, outer peel. I think Nick on Facebook mm -hmm. was talking about that, that, you know, maybe you don't need to buy organic for items like oranges or grapefruit. Okay, let's talk about that one. <laughs> Is that a myth? Is that a misnomer? <laughs> it's, it used to be the case and, and certainly something that we hear a lot, right? If, if you're going to peel it, then you, you're peeling off the pesticides. You might as well not buy organic. Um, so something that consumers really need to know about um, is that there are newer pesticides on the market that are what, what are called systemic pesticides, meaning that they are taken up by the vascular system of the plants. So they're not sprayed on top of the crops, they actually go into the crops. So when an insect then tries to eat that crop, they are eating um, pesticides actually in the fruit or in the grain. So that's one reason why it's not always the case anymore that you can just wash off pesticides the other one is there are, so pesticides is a broad term, right? Which encompasses insecticides that target insects, herbicides that control weeds, but also fungicides um, that control mold. And on an orange, for example, the most commonly detected pesticides in, and I'm saying in oranges, not on oranges, are two very commonly used fungicides to keep an orange from going moldy, right? We've all had oranges that suddenly have green mold growing on them. Um, those also penetrate the skin. So those, when the US Department of Agriculture tests oranges or tangerines or grapefruit, any kind of citrus fruit for pesticide residues, they do find high percentages, about 70 to 80% of the fruit that they test has those fungicides in the flesh. Hmm. 
Hmm. So they test them after they peel them. They only test the things that people will eat. Uh -huh. um, so just something to be aware of. Okay. So that, you know, thick outer peel may not be necessarily protecting you if the pesticide uh, is on the inside of the fruit. That's great information to know. Um, as far as different types of organic food, Chelsea on Facebook, for example, wanted to know the difference and this goes a little bit beyond organic, but she wanted to know about eggs because I guess, you know, uh, mm. she consumes a lot of eggs. Her family consumes a lot of eggs. And when she goes to the grocery store, it can be confusing just to buy eggs because there's organic eggs. There's, you know, free range eggs. There's cage free eggs. There's so many different kinds. And um, is there any insight that you can offer us when it comes to buying eggs? Yes, yeah, just that egg cartons are the most confusing in terms of the labeling. Um, absolutely. So you've got so many different claims and, and seals that you can find on a carton of eggs. It's very hard to make sense of what that all means. Um, so let's start with free range and cage free, those kinds of claims. What people should know is organic actually means cage free. Organic means free range, because as we discussed earlier, the organic standards are very, they cover a lot of different things about how farms raise and, and, and just raise the food, right? So um, the organic standards do require that laying hens have access to the outdoors. There's uh, problems with the USDA enforcing that so that you can't really expect organic eggs to come from hens that actually went outside, they will have had access to the outside. That's an important distinction, unfortunately. Interesting. Um, and um, if you, as a consumer, if you really are looking for eggs from hens that actually went outside and were able to engage in their natural behaviors, hens love pecking in the, in the grass for bugs, eating seeds, finding seeds. If you want that kind of good animal welfare, when you're buying eggs, then you really should be looking for um, the certified humane or American humane seal in combination with a, a claim that says pasture raised. Um, that's, that's good for animal welfare. Um, but in terms of what organic means on, on a carton of eggs, it does mean that the, the hens ate certified organic feed, which is important. So there would have been no grains that were grown on farms that use synthetic herbicides in the chicken's feed. Um, no genetically engineered organisms would be allowed in organic chicken's feed. Uh, they can't be treated with antibiotics, which is very important for promoting public health. So that's prohibited in organic, definitely a reason to buy organic eggs. And um, yeah, so to, just to say there's lots, of, there's lots of reasons to buy organic when you're, when you're buying eggs. And, and maybe this is the same concept that applies to dairy as well. So when you're buying organic dairy products, um, that product was made from uh, cows that consumed organic feed. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And with, with dairy, um, so again, those cows were not given antibiotics if they get sick then this is another common misconception about organic is that some people, critics will say, well, organic is kind of cruel because if organic animals get sick, they can't be treated with antibiotics. And so imagine a dairy cow gets mastitis, that's extremely painful, right? That cow has to be treated. And actually in organic, that cow by law has to be treated um, with antibiotics if antibiotics will is what she needs. But then by law, her milk can no longer be sold as organic, right? So um, that's a very important thing to, to know about organic dairy. And the other thing is um, dairy cows are ruminants. They, by nature, want to eat grass. They want to graze on pasture. And there is research that shows that cows grazing on grass produce milk that has different nutritional um, attributes. So a different nutritional profile, different kinds of fats are found in milk from dairy cows that grazed. And the organic standards do require grazing um, during the growing season. So that is an important difference, again, between organic and conventional. Interesting. 
You know, we have a friend, um, my husband actually has a friend who's a farmer, and he talks about, he, he's not an organic farmer. And I wanted to ask you about this concept because there was another farmer that posted on my Facebook page with this concept that, um, y you know, there are organic farms or fields, so to speak, that are placed adjacent to conventional farms, non-organic farms. And that the idea that it just takes a gust of wind to spray a pesticide onto what is supposedly an organic field, is that something that happens that is commonplace and thereby um, you know, eradicates the notion that that organic crop is actually what organic? So, right, so again, let's go back to what does organic actually mean? Organic means that the farmers that are selling their food as organic followed the organic rules set by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So it's a process-based program, right? It is telling the farmers what they can and cannot do. It is not necessarily taking the final product that they produce and testing it. So that's why it is possible for uh, some pesticide residues that are prohibited in organic production to show up in or on organic foods. And that can be because of things like pesticide drift, right? Where a neighboring farmer who is not organic is using certain pesticides and the wind carries it um, onto the organic farm and that, that contaminates the organic, um, the organic food. That organic farmer is not to blame for that. So they can still sell their their um, foods as organic. Now that said, there is a requirement as well. Like again, the organic standards are extremely complicated, long, and they cover a lot. And one of the other things that they do cover is they actually require the organic inspector or the inspection agency to test up to or at least five percent of the farms that they certify. So they can just um, they can either do it based on on the risk assessment if they think that one farm is at risk of being contaminated they can test um, for pesticides or for GMOs because um, GMOs are another thing that can drift onto a farm from the neighboring farm um, but they don't have to test all of the all of the organic foods that they certify but they do have to test some interesting. Is there anything else that um, you think people ought to know about this topic that I haven't asked you? I just think it's it's very important for people to understand um, that organic isn't just about pesticide residues. Organic, the organic law, um, because there there is such a thing as the organic law, right? The Organic Foods Production Act of 1990. That kind of um, is is the basis for why you can trust an organic label on a food, that it, it's really not just no pesticides. It really covers a lot more than that. It's um, The law was written to really reduce synthetic inputs, so things like synthetic fertilizers that people don't necessarily think about when they're buying food, uh, but that really have important impacts on the sustainability of our food system and on um, protecting the health of our soil, which is an incredibly important natural resource for how we are going to keep producing food in the future. Um, organic is not perfect. There's certainly a lot more that organic rules can cover that they don't currently, um, but they cover a lot. And they really are aimed at uh, reducing synthetic inputs, protecting soil quality, protecting water quality, so you're really doing a lot. Uh, if you buy organic, you're supporting farmers who have made a commitment because they don't have to be organic. They choose to be organic. They choose to follow very strict rules that are sometimes hard to follow, hard, hard to meet. Uh, but they've chosen to do that because they want to give consumers a product um, that has environmental benefits and also benefits for consumers' health. And um, so it's important to, to think of organic in that way rather than just, oh, this one has fewer pesticides. I have uh, one last question before we go, and we want to thank Jody Brandon 
Um, and, and let's see who else is watching live here. Uh, let's see, Russell is watching live. So I just want to say a hi to those folks and thanks for tuning in. Um, one last question. This comes from an expert show insider who wants to know, what about the other products? So if we're not talking about food, uh, you see a lot of products that are marketed as organic and uh, betting comes to mind. This person wants to know whether it's a, there's a, an actual health benefit to buying organic cotton sheets and um, different you know, types of children's clothes, for example, that are labeled as organic. Is there um, some kind of harm in wearing non-organic clothing or having that kind of fabric against your skin? I, I don't think so. I think, again, as we talked about earlier, in that case, what you're really doing by buying organic clothing, it means you're buying organic cotton, and cotton is a very, it's a crop that requires, doesn't require, conventional cotton farms can use a lot of pesticides. So if you're buying organic clothing, you're supporting the organic cotton farmers who are not using those pesticides, and you're really doing something good for the environment. Um, for farm workers, for wildlife. So um, I, I don't think that there's any harm really to, to wearing clothing that is not organic. It's definitely an environmental benefit um, to buying organic. Okay. And I, I know that I said that was the last question, but we have one more question. <laughs> and this one comes from a farmer, uh, another farmer who wants to caution about um, not just the idea of whether something is organic or conventional, but um, looking at the labels of your produce, you may have actually said this, but seeing where that produce is from, and she was cautioning against produce that comes from places like South America, where, per, where perhaps the rules when it comes to farming and the cleanliness of the food um, are not as stringently followed as they might be followed here in the U.S. Right. So that's another thing um, definitely for, for consumers to be aware of. Uh, what does organic mean when the food was grown in another country? And um, the U.S. Department of Agriculture does have equivalency agreements with other, um, other countries. So the European Union, um, Israel, Japan, they have equivalency agreements, which means if it was grown to the organic standards in that country, we consider that equivalent. So you can import it to the United States and label it with the USDA organic seal. If the country that it's coming from does not have an equivalency agreement with the U.S., then they actually have to meet our standards. And one of um, a USDA accredited certifying agency has to be in that country, has to go to that farm and has to check that those farmers and processors followed our USDA organic standards. So that is another strength of this label is that it, it does mean the same thing regardless of where it comes from. Now, that said, because there's always, you know, it's always more complicated, um, there are some countries that have, pro that have had problems with fraud. Um, and there are, so, so I personally would caution against um, certain Eastern European countries and, and organic food imported from those countries, and that is based on USDA pesticide residue data showing that there are higher levels of pesticides um, on some products. So if it's important to you, then maybe avoid um, imports from those countries. But um, that data has also shown actually overall that imports from countries like Mexico and, and other so South American countries like Chile um, are pretty consistently have the lower levels of pesticide residues that domestic produce does. Interesting. Okay. Fascinating stuff. Wow. Thank you so much for all of this information. You have answered uh, all of my questions regarding organic produce and organic items, and you've just been a great resource for this. I uh, appreciate your time in joining us today, Charlotte. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. All right, and thank you for being part of the show. If you've been tuning in, I uh, want to remind you that you can always connect with us on our various social media accounts. We are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, and we are also on Instagram. Give us a like at those. Uh, Anna Canzano on Facebook, That Expert Show on Twitter and Instagram. 
I know that life is busy and sometimes you can't always catch something live, so we always put this show back out to you both on YouTube but also as a podcast. So wherever you listen to podcasts, whether that's on Apple Podcasts, on Google Play, SoundCloud, all of those options, uh, you can listen to this show as you're just driving around with your busy day and take in this information that way. The best way to connect with the show is actually to take out your phone and send a message to the number 474747. That message will just have one word. It says show, S-H-O-W, and that way you can become an expert show insider, get updates about the show. You'll also get a special expert show deal at Shoe Mill. That's the company that I talked to you about earlier. You know, when I was in my 20s, I bought cheap footwear just because I didn't have extra money to spend. And listen, my feet would hurt by the end of the day. I know you know what I'm talking about. I actually found out going to a shoe mill store that I was wearing the wrong size that whole time. And that was one of the primary reasons that my feet hurt. So I have taken the time to go into shoe mill, talk with the folks there, and I've learned not only that I was wearing the wrong size, but the shoes that I was buying just weren't right for my feet. Now when I step into a shoe mill shoe, it just feels like my feet are in heaven. And the best part is that I don't have to sacrifice style for comfort. So if you want an experience like this, check out one of the stores in Oregon if you live here in Oregon or Check out their products at shoemill.com. I promise that you will find something that you love and you'll feel so good to be investing in yourself with a good shoe. Hey, if you got something good out of this show, go ahead and give us a like, a subscribe, leave us a review that helps other people find us. And um, we'll see you, I guess, on the next episode of That Expert Show, where you help run the show.